Hi, and welcome to Debunk File. My name is Sup, and today we're going to be talking about the incredibly strange mystery, Grave Robbing for Morons. As dark as it is to say, if you need to find anything on the internet, and I mean anything, it is possible. In this particular case, I'm more so referencing tragic events like death. Online, it is surprisingly easy to find videos of, well, people dying. There are entire websites dedicated to things like this, and it's extremely disturbing to say the least, but the internet hasn't always been around, and neither have these videos, at least not for everybody to see. Now to this day, I have no idea why there is such an infatuation with mutilation and death, but one of the first moments of public realization came in the year of 1978. On November 10th, 1998, a film by the name of Faces of Death was released in theaters, but it wasn't your average run-of-the-mill horror film. Oh no, it was anything but that. This was a documentary-style film depicting various ways to die, most of which being shown in incredibly gruesome detail. The catch? The death scene were real. Well, most of them at least. It's rumored that a few of the clips are fabricated, but that still means that the majority of these deaths shown are authentic, and they are incredibly disturbing and are just as bad as the stuff you can find online today. And somehow, the movie did great. It made $35 million in the box office despite being banned in multiple countries, and sold like crazy on VHS, spawning sequels, and even becoming influential enough to spawn tons of direct-to-video copycats. Apparently, throughout the 80s and 90s, film-like faces of death were being sold in shops everywhere at the demand of the consumer. For some reason, people became obsessed with seeing death, possibly out of fear, and this strange fascination never let up. And while tons of these VHSs and DVDs were sold, one of them over time stood out. It was entitled, Ensuring Your Place in Hell. And at the time, it was just another shockumentary in the vast, endless sea of copycats in this particular craze that died out with the internet, most of which being completely fake. But ironically, the rise of the internet coincided with this particular DVD's rise to internet stardom. You see, with this particular DVD, there were four short films in it, all between 20 to 40 minutes in length. As a side note, I want to mention that I couldn't find exactly what year Ensuring Your Place in Hell was actually released. When researching, almost everyone stated it was a VHS copy, which makes sense as all the videos inside of it are that level of quality, but I was only able to find DVD copies online. Anyways, inside you had Mortuary of the Dead, Cooking with Huck Botko, Exploding Varmints, and last but not least, Grave Robbing for Morons, which somebody uploaded to YouTube in 2014, where it quickly gained an immense amount of attention. The VHS copy is 26 minutes long, and follows this stuttering teenager or young adult whose name is Anthony, and as the title Grave Robbing for Morons suggests, he's here to teach us how to rob a grave. Throughout the 26 minute tutorial, he mentions that he has only robbed two graves, but gives an incredibly detailed analysis of what he is doing. Things such as the various states of decomposition that most people really wouldn't even think of, but then on the other side of the coin, he mentions some really stupid things, like how if somebody were to catch you in the action, you're supposed to knock them out with a shovel so that they just think it's a dream and they wake up. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. The most important piece in the titular video would have to be the ending. This is the moment where he name drops himself, but also the rest of the crew. Like stated earlier, his name is Anthony, the cameraman is Gene O, and there are two other members that he name drops by the names of Bucci and Taco. It's Anthony and Gino, okay? This is made by still. Um, we worked hard. Um, also, Bucci, Bucci and Taco um, also helped it, uh, at the very beginning. Me and um, Gino first opened it up though, alright, we opened it up, we broke it open, but the other guys helped out a lot. Right after he finishes with his name dropping, he mentions that someday he will rob Houdini's grave. A grave that actually has since been tampered with and damaged. And to this day, we aren't entirely sure if Houdini is even inside. However, the reason this video gained the popularity it did is because of how genuinely authentic it seems, despite that one ridiculous moment. Most notably, the skull he is holding looks incredibly realistic, but we will get back to that later. Also, if this video were to be fake, these would have to be some incredible actors right here, because to put it blunt, 
This kid is pretty strange. He has a hardcore stutter and his eyes and overall motions are just odd. If this kid was truly an actor, this would be some incredibly impressive work. To make sure that uh, I'm so authentic, or you take that dentures and you make sure they're with them, so that way the person knows who this person is. All right, all right. Because sometimes, sometimes you you go and you risk your ass looking for somebody. All right, and somebody might pay some serious money for it. So you have to make sure it's the real thing. Okay, and and you have to make sure it's the real thing. So yeah. But up to this point, we have merely scratched the surface, and now we're going to truly dig deep and find out if grave robbing for morons is actually real or not. When figuring out if this was real or not, I first wanted to investigate the DVD by first figuring out as much about the DVD as I could, and then actually analyzing aspects of the video inside. And this is what I found. Thanks to the website, I was able to find that somebody bought this DVD a few years ago and realized that their payment went out to a company called Serial Killer Calendar. Looking at the website in question, it seems to be a place that sells magazines and books about various serial killers. Overall, while being an interesting site, it didn't really have too much to do with selling VHSs, until you look at the bottom of the site. Like old school VHS covers? Check out our sister site, VHS Wasteland. This is more up to speed. It confirms the fact that these people are very interested in VHSs, so it wouldn't be out of this world to see why they would sell something like this. The person I mentioned before actually got into contact with one of the figureheads of this company who sold VHSs like these on the side but unfortunately, he knew nothing about the clips at all. So now, we have to take matters into our own hands, as per usual. Like stated earlier, this DVD has four videos included, and so what I wanted to do was see if we could debunk any of these videos, which would increase the likelihood of grave robbing actually being fake. My first stop was Cooking with Huck Botko. This short film revolves around Huck, who in a documentary style format, like Grave Robbing, tells us that he is going to take revenge on his family by feeding them some disgusting stuff, including moments where he gets random people from the streets to spit in his cake, where he then feeds it to his family. This video though is debunked actually quite easily, and that is for the simple fact that Huck is actually a movie director with quite a bit of notoriety behind his name too, as he directed The Last Exorcism from 2010 as well as some other films. Exploding Varmints is one of the other short films here, and it lives up to the title. It's an instructional video about hunting varmints, and throughout the video for almost 30 minutes we just see varmints being shot, and as a result, exploding. The company that made this video was named Varmint Video Advanced Action Videos, and they specialized in making videos just like these. Their website is now closed, but this was a real company, and I'm assuming all the deaths we saw here were real. The final video not named Grave Robbing for Morons is Mortuary of the Dead, and this is the video that most closely resembles Grave Robbing. It's an extremely slow paced video of some mortuary workers seemingly filming their job. There are multiple shots of dead bodies, and like Grave Robbing, it just has the feel of something that could possibly be real. It has one other similarity to Grave Robbing though, because just like that video, this one also has a moment of absurdity. Now, I've never been inside a mortuary before, and while I did search up some images of mortuaries, I'm sure they don't do them complete justice. But do mortuaries really have dozens of unborn babies inside jars? Yeah, I'm not really sure about that one, but if you know anything about that, please leave us a comment. But with all that being said, I'm left a little baffled as to why these specific videos were all in this TVD. It seems like a huge step to know that some of the videos on this DVD are in fact fake, because to me, it just seems that it increases the likelihood of grave robbing also being fictitious. But in reality, these videos seem like they were put together without any rhyme or reason and might not have any relation to each other at all. So while some of these aren't real, I really don't think that matters. So like we said, we are going to truly analyze grave robbing for morons now, starting with that skull. Like stated earlier, it's an incredibly realistic looking skull, but is it truly real? Well, thanks to an amazing comment from someone on Reddit, this question was answered. 
He kicks off his comment by mentioning that medical skulls are shaped to exemplify average anatomical form, and mentions that these medical skeletons are almost always fake and are usually made out of plastic-like material that appears and feels thicker than bone. He goes on to say that at the 11 second mark, the bone reflects, and according to him, this doesn't happen to real skulls, unless they are handled like crazy. He then talks about the teeth, and how they don't look anything like real teeth, and goes into deep detail on why exactly it doesn't look real at all. He then mentions the styloid process, which is a pointed piece of bone below the ear which according to him would never be intact in this skull's condition. This honestly was an incredible comment and it seems to have debunked one of the most important aspects of the video, being that skull. But we're not done just yet. We still need to attempt to find out who this kid is and if he was a real grave robber, and there are some convincing leads. If you listen to this kid talk, it is clear that he has a slight accent, which sounds like it would be from New York or New Jersey. This is incredibly important, because remember how his name is Anthony? Well, check out this headline from the New York Times posted in late 1999. When reading, you realize that it is about a man from New York named Anthony Casamassima, who was arrested in 1999 for robbing art from cemeteries. That would have to be an unbelievable coincidence to have two people, both named Anthony, who both live in New York and both stole things from graves. The moment where Anthony reveals his name in the video is of much importance too, as he stutters and seems noticeably close to saying the same last name from the man in the article. Okay, this was made by, uh, by Anthony, because, uh, uh, well as a matter of fact, let's forget the last name. And even despite all that, I still think that this is a coincidence. And this is for a number of reasons. First off, what they did was in no way similar. Yes, they both did scour graveyards, but the Anthony in our video stole the actual skeletons, and the Anthony in this article stole items or art from cemeteries, most notably a window from Salem Fields, which he sold for $60,000. The point is, their definition of grave robbing was completely different. Then. There's the time period. The Anthony that was written about in the New York Times article was arrested in 1999, and at the time he was 40 years old, which seems too old to fit our grave robber. If we could only figure out when grave robbing for morons was actually filmed. But guess what? We do have a rough estimate, thanks to a key object sitting on the desk next to him. That copy of Evil Dead 2. Now we have a starting point. The absolute earliest this could have been possibly filmed was in 1987, since that's when the film came out. Now, Anthony did appear to be a teenager or a very young adult, but sometimes older people do sometimes have baby faces. For this to match up and be the same Anthony from the New York Times article, this footage would have to be from the earliest possible date of 1987, and Anthony would have to be 28 years old here, basically having a huge baby face so that it could match. The likelihood that this recording was from the earliest possible date isn't exactly too high, and neither is Anthony just so happening to have a major baby face. Again, it is possible, but it's pretty unlikely if you ask me. There's also no mention in this article about his stutter or awkwardness, which I feel would have been at least talked about at least once if it were the same person due to how severe it was. With no image of the man anywhere, I just can't believe that it isn't the same guy. There is one other lead as to who Anthony could be, and it belongs to a YouTube commenter who said, The guy with the grave robberies is from Red Hook. Goes by the name of Screws. He's been dead damn near 20 years now. He used to sell bones to some of the Hoognins over in Sheep's Heads Bay. I'm surprised that no one knew that. Common knowledge by me. It's common knowledge about me. I'm from Ozone Park originally. It was from the local scuttlebutt back in the early 90s when I was a teenager. He ran a chop shop too, back in the day. Bootleg movies, knockoff clothes, you name it. That's how he got the nickname Screws. He used to screw everyone over. From what I heard, they found him over in Whitestone at a dumpster by the bridge with his knees parallel with his ears. He'd been bent backwards in the wrong direction. His head was resting against his ass. No, the location the comment gives, like Red Hook, Ozone Park, and Whitestone, are all locations that are very accurate. But unfortunately, it's just impossible to trust a YouTube comment like this one. But thanks to Anthony's name dropping at the end of the grave digging video, we got an even greater lead. Remember how the DVD that this was originally found on features four short films that have no relation to each other? 
Well, somebody was actually able to find a VHS tape with only grave robbing for morons on it, being sold by a company with the name King of the Witches. And when visiting this website, it appears that the mystery is finally solved. Our videotapes are sourced from recycled materials to emulate the CD video store feel that inspired us in the first place. If you don't like it, stick to Blu-rays. We're not here to cater to people who don't understand tapes. They literally said it. They produce videos on VHSs that appear older than they really are. But do you want to know what really seals the deal? It all goes back to Anthony's name dropping. And guess what? One of the names was Bucci. Bucci. Bucci N. And guess what? One of the owners of this company is named Christopher Bucci. On top of creating these realistic VHS-like short films, he also runs a YouTube channel where he and friends review independent horror films. Oh. Hi, I'm Chris and this is Crack. Yeah. And this is a four minute and 20 second film review. I did message him just for final confirmation and I'm yet to receive a response, but the evidence here really is just too much to ignore. These guys have to be the creators, especially since they used to sell this, and it aligns so perfectly with everything else they have made, which means that this year's old mystery on whether this video was real or not has been debunked. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to follow all of our social medias for updates and exclusive content, all linked in the description. Especially consider becoming a patron, as even $1 a month really helps, and you guys get some slick rewards. And of course, Make sure to like this video, share this with your friends, and subscribe. As always, my name is Seth from Demon File. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.